My people, what up, though? We back with another episode of All Black Men Need Therapy. My name is Chief. And I'm Bell. And we here again. We appreciate y'all for still rocking with us, man. So before we get into the into today's topic, we'll touch on last week's episode just a little bit. We appreciate we get a lot of feedback. We get more and more feedback every week, and I think it's real. It's real, real dope. So one question that kind of stood out to me was with the entanglements episode was kind of like, well, what does entanglements have to do with the mental health of black men? Now we can go, that's going to be something we actually specifically address in this episode, but you want to go back yeah, to, to the premise yeah, of why yeah, we created the episode? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's good that we're doing this because I think the title can be uh, misleading for people. Like let's just, just to reiterate to, uh, to some of our first time listeners, maybe we are not therapists um, at all. I, well, I mean, I'm chief's therapist, <laughs> but I'm not licensed or anything like that. But um, we don't we don't promote being the answer, right, to whatever challenges you're facing. All all we're trying to do is shed light on, quite frankly, the challenges we're facing, which right. you may, if you are a black male, have faced or will face um, in the in the near future. So. This is just a a mirror, guys. That's probably the best way to look at it. A mirror to some of the things that you guys may be facing as well. And we're just openly discussing it with the um, hope that it encourages you to do the same. And not necessarily publicly like we're doing, but at minimum to yourself, right? Like internalizing what's going on and, and addressing it, right? And addressing it doesn't have to be like actual, going to see an actual com- clinician. It can just be you understanding and coming to terms with what, with what your um, some of what, what some of your traumas or, or I guess shortcomings have have gotten you and and how it shows up in your life today. Not word, and I, I think it's important to once we've recognized those things, you you're in the mirror and you're having a conversation like yeah you know what that's it then you accept it and once you've accepted it now we have to respond we have to actually actually have to move forward in doing something about changing that part of yourself that you may have discomfort with because oftentimes we will look it in the face and make whatever excuse we can we can make or my man over here is the king of rationalization and <laughs> trying to rationalize why things should be this certain way when in actuality no it needs to be adjusted and, and, and amended for the betterment of your of your mental health and, and well-being in, in, as a whole yeah and and again, I don't want to spend too much time on this, guys, but I think even if you can't recognize it, recognizing the fact that there's something that you haven't dealt with, maybe, right? Like, like Chief, Chief didn't realize he had daddy issues till recently. No, I, I've been new, but I just, I, the, the more we begin to talk about it, the more I, the more I realize how deep rooted they are yeah like because i'm i'm always sitting like nah i don't you know i don't i don't necessarily need him i'm i'm doing just fine blah 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 but as i look at certain areas of my life i'm like wow had i had this influence shit could have been different right you know what i'm saying and and unfortunately as like, much as we joke around but it, it started because of slavery like i could like, yeah this daddy issue wrapped all around it oh yeah, in yeah a yeah. bunch of different phases of my life so mm-hmm. that's where that stems from nevertheless yeah again guys we just want to make sure we reiterate the premise and that's it, right? We we are doing what we would like all black men to do, and it's identifying some of the, the challenges, um, addressing some of the challenges, and um, if nothing else, just finding a way to release so you don't combust. I right? think we should have like a live. Yo, what is up with you in this not, live? Not, bro? I'm, talking, talking, about, I'm talking about like a day where we invite the fellas to get together and have these conversations. I'm talking about fellas like just put a public oh, thing like out, a forum, like a forum type joint, and be like, "Listen, this is where we at. Let's get together and talk." I went to a, a it was a, it was more a, a um, religion based and faith based uh-huh. thing before where I went, and it was like five different pastors up here in a room full of men, and dudes were talking. They got like emotional, like dude, like the past. We asked questions to the pastors, and they gave us their personal perspective and you know do some religion in the behind but it was mm-hmm. super 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 dope and not that again we're not therapists and, and uh, we don't have all the answers but I think it'd be good for open dialogue, uh, dialogue. Room, right open dialogue yeah. in a room full of men to kind of get some shit off our chest I think that'd be dope I mean that it speaks to everything that we're talking about right, right. it's just actually putting it forward so yeah. another thing we talked about too was kind of like once, once once we get once we get the show really really popping and moving we, we gonna raise some funds and be able to actually send black men to therapy yeah 
Yeah. So that's 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 another thing coming. That's all you know behind the scenes, but it's well, gonna it be was. Weird. Well, it was, Until I mentioned Either way, so somebody watching might be like, you know what, I'm down for that. Here's a hundred grand. Like, you know what I'm saying? We accepted all donations. Here's a hundred grand for <laughs> for your movement, man. You know what I'm saying? So that'll be that'll be real, real dope. Yeah, and we spent so much time on that just now, guys, because the, today's topic, um, it it falls in line with that. Um, the, the title is "Where's the Love?" And where's and, the love? And basically, that was dope, though. Appreciate it. I, I like that one. Where's the love? That was that was a good one. Um, I was inspired by the uh, the Lock song on their first album. I think it was. Um, but anyway, we referenced the. Uh, I think it's good that we started with the entanglement thing. I'm gonna read a meme that was sent to us a while ago, and it's a photo of both Will Smith and Kanye West crying, and it says, "Here we have two broken black men." Kanye West has never been the same since losing his mom. He is currently going through a mental breakdown. Will Smith endured listening to his wife of 23 years explain an, an affair she had on him. People use their situations to make fun of them. I saw many memes of them both. How is this funny? This is why men, especially black men, don't open up. They're seen as weak if they show emotion. We need to change that narrative. They hurt too. If it had been women, we wouldn't be having this discussion. I don't know if I agree with that. Especially women that like people in the limelight. Nevertheless, no matter what, we need to support and protect our men. Especially if you're married, their pain is your pain. Mental illness is real, and it is nothing to joke about. Yeah, and and then obviously, um, who's not pictured in there, but the same result was Tyrese, oh, right? He had his joint at one. One, yeah, with, with his daughter, and and I obviously don't know the ins and outs of that. I just know he was extremely vulnerable publicly. And got flamed for. I it. mean, it was bad. Got and flamed for. It. But honestly speaking, like from his perspective, I don't, I don't remember the exact dynamics of what took place. But I do know, I'd wall out in the very same nature over my kids with, with, without the, any equivocations about it. Like, but I don't the even what people. Think. Yeah, you're right. The difference is you wouldn't go on YouTube, right, or Instagram or whatever platform he used. And I'm not saying your way is right, his way is wrong. I'm just saying, my point of that is we internalize everything. You know what I'm saying? Like we and we don't outwardly express it, and then unfortunately, when we do outwardly express it, we become the subject of ridicule. You know what I'm saying? So that's so then it's like a double-edged sword. It's like people want help, they reach out, and then when they do that, they're like, "Oh, this nigga crazy." Right. You know what I'm saying? So so that's why I think I think it's better now, right? I think it's much better. What like my daughter's generation, like they normalize um, going to therapy, whereas mm -hmm. We normalize trauma back then, right? right? Like I think the the, the uh, dynamic is shifting. Which, However, which is dope. Yeah, is is extremely dope. However, it's we're not there yet, right? But we're, uh, this is we're all work in progress. But my point in saying all of that is, it's like we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. Right. Right. We internalize it. We don't say anything to anybody, and then we explode, and we still get labeled. And even if you sometimes it's the latter. If you don't explode, you're just in this deep, dark depression for as long as who knows, and no one knows about it. And you get these memes where check on your strong friends and like homies really in a bad spot. I I, I mean I can attest to that from personal experience. We'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll dive into that later. Yeah, and and I think for the listeners too, I want to talk about it's deeper. It's <laughs> goes back to slavery, but <laughs> but. <laughs> But it's deeper, it's deeper than just, you know, we didn't show up, black people, I'm speaking for black men, we didn't show up being um, emotionally detached or um, a, the or lacking the ability to be vulnerable. We didn't show up that way, right? So it, it comes from, it's a, it's a long line of, of, of historical dehumanization of black people, injustice against black people. Dehumanization, um, S-A-T word. Yeah, <laughs> like violence against black folks. <laughs> And we got to talk about this at one point, but it's so crazy to me how we get painted as this violent, visceral group, but the most violent, historically and statistically, which we'll get into in another episode, the most violent in, in, um, man on the planet is the white man, right? Like historically um, and statistically, but we'll, we'll talk about that in another episode. But um, I just find it crazy how we endure all these things. And then we're expected to just pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, right? And so you, you, you add all those things up, and then you add in poverty. Then you add in um, 
the uh, the lack of opportunity, the lack of resources, right? All these things, lack lack the healthcare, like sufficient healthcare. Like even if you look at present state, like what group was affected most by COVID nineteen? It was the black community, right. right? Black and brown community. So these are all the things that play in the part of us a not going to a doctor right um because we don't have the resources and then when we do have the resources we, we don't even go anyway because we oftentimes don't trust them right so so then where why don't you trust them well and chief well great question uh internet so <laughs> here's the thing guys and i don't have time to go through all of it but i want you to look up um clinical trials on African Americans, you can just t- type that in, and a bunch of stuff will come up. But the, one of the most notable is the Tuskegee experiment back in 1932, and um, what it was is it was a black men only um, an experiment. Is that back then there wasn't a cure for syphilis or, or anything, or even any treatment for it, and they were trying to figure out what it was and stuff like that. But again, it was only black men. Not that they were the only ones uh, in, impacted by it, but that was uh, part of the. Um, experiment basically they studied uh, I think it was like 200 something people some of them had syphilis some of them didn't didn't and um, what they were doing is they were look it up but basically they were lab rats right, right, right. and in exchange what they got is money. free, free health care yeah, visits money. And, and money right and it's like and food like literally food was one of the, the, the things that they were giving them it was really really bad um, and so bad that back in 1974 they got a ten million dollar lawsuit. Um, that was um, considered reparations for it, but nonetheless, look that up. But I, I, I tell you that to say that this place of well, why don't black men go to go to the doctors? Why don't they go see the doctors? Like, look, my my dad, right? He just turned. Shit, I don't know how old my dad is, mainly because he don't know how old he is, <laughs> and that's a true story. But uh, I think he just turned sixty two. But um, earlier this year. He unfortunately had a heart attack, and what I found out afterwards, and he was he's fine now and everything like that, but he fully functional and everything. But what I found out right after that is the last time he went to the damn doctor was 20 years prior to that, right? So the fact that he only had a heart attack in 20 years is is really good, but again, we get painted as like you don't we don't go to the doctor, but these are the type of things these experiments and these um trials that get passed down through generations it's like it's like the fish story right so it's like i caught a fish this big right and then by the time it gets to the fifth person it's a damn shark right right, right? right yeah so sure. it's um these are the, the the conversations that our grandparents had right with our parents right as to how how we were wrongly treated during these times and then what that does is that conditions us to be like all right well i don't trust the doctors either right and this is deep so I don't want to spend too much time on that. This, but that's where it gets from. That you go from I don't trust doctors to I'm not taking medicine to I, to to you know what God got me right right to God got like that sure. that that's where the faith comes in and and that's why you know people of color are some of the, the most religious and faithful people because at times of despair that's all we had right and sure. like even when these we look at these prominent figures, doctors, you know, lawyers, police officers, that all have done us wrong in some way, shape, or form, it, it creates a, um, a conditioning, right, that, that, a di- of, of distrust. So we start to self-heal and do our, and, and, and find ways to, to cope best we can. Um, so that's, that's where it comes from. So we typically don't, well, I shouldn't say typically, I'll speak for my, my family, like, Going to the doctor is not something on the forefront of, of most of my oh, uncles and aunts' minds. I had my mom just lost a homeboy not too long ago. Rest in peace, Mr. Amos. But I think that he had a conversation where maybe months before, like, you know, shit ain't right with me. Right. When it's my time, it's my time. Like, I'm not going to the doctor. Yeah. And I believe they found him. Like, he knew it was time. Like, laying on the floor, like, under his own blanket. Like, he... He knew it was time to go. You know That's what I'm saying? Like he, you know what I'm saying? It was just one of them things where I, I, you know, I don't know what the stigma was or what the, you know, the mental issue, mental health issue was behind that, or it could have everything to do with what you just spoke about. Right. But the reality was, he had he knew what was going on, and still blatantly refused to go to the doctor. And it's so crazy too, man, because if I just even talking about this, like we really, as black folks, we like really swing the pendulum. Like here's what I mean by that. 
Like, you got situations like that where people were encouraging him to go get checked out because they knew something was wrong, right? And he was like, no, I'm, I'm good. Like, he knew something. He would tell people, like, yeah, man, you know. And he, I think he had gotten a surgery before the time, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever, but still, you know, didn't go. So you got that, right? And then you got the people who, who, who say, you know what, I'm about to go see a therapist. Right. Right? Yeah. I'm about to go see a therapist. And, and, and a, a lot of times they're met with, what, you crazy? Yeah. Well, only white people go to therapy. So remember when we initially had that conversation, like, yo, we, we, when we talked, the very first conversation we had that inspired the whole podcast, and I was like, so what you going to do? Go there and just be like, listen, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me, but it might be. Let's talk. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, but right. just being open enough to, 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 to dig into the, to compa- the compartments in your brain, like, okay, that's something that, you, that you've that you been struggling with. That's something you've been struggling with. Like, my man didn't necessarily have anything he was ready to identify that was a problem, but he's like, yo, I think this could help me. Let me give it a shot. Right. Because for me, and me personally, it was... Shit that I was doing that I knew I shouldn't have been doing and helping me understand why, right? Because I I, I, I've identified it. I've, I, in a lot of cases, I've stopped it. But, like, why do I have the urge, right? Like, what, where, where does that go? Where does that come from where it's like you're, you're doing well in this space? Why, why do you want to step outside of this space and do the same thing but different? Like, right. wh- like what, what is that? That doesn't make any sense. So, again, it was... There was nothing bad that came from my decisions, but it was just more of like the trying to get a better understanding of, of where this is stemming like, like from. I, kind of like I know better. Why am I not doing better? There has to be something that's blocked. That, you know, that's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and, even, and it's like, and it's not like for me personally, it, it's like, like talk like, like risk taking, right? Like we use that as an example. Like I am a big risk taker. Like I take enormous risks, right? And it's like, why? Like, why are you taking this risk, right? Why, why, why does this, why does this make sense to you? So, if I, I mean, I'm gonna put all your business up, but I, I think that's more of a financial thing. Your risk, they're trying to better, better, you know, better the bank and whatnot. Because, like, when I say, when you think, when you think of risk, like, I'm just looking, you know, from from the adrenaline rush standpoint. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm jumping off of cliffs in Jamaica. <laughs> you're like, Where I'm not doing you're that. Like, nah, I'm not doing that. Right, but. exactly. <laughs> and no, it, but that's, but see, why do you want to jump off a cliff? You know what I'm saying? Like it's uh, <laughs> that's trauma. Like I mean, you trying to die? Like, like, do you not want to be here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like it's it's um it's a little bit of all of that. Um, but I think I think what's I don't want to say most most important. I, I think what's important for us is how we handle it. And we I don't when you say we, I'm taking we as everyone from the outside. Because that's how this initially started, with the people and everyone laughing at Tyrese, laughing at Kanye, laughing at Will, and not respecting that the dude needs help. The dude, you know, his mental health isn't bad. I got into a conversation with someone, and it was about the whole Will Smith thing, and it was, oh, well, he, he cheated, so he deserved that. Ah, maybe maybe he did, you know, she deserved for her to cheat on him. But him being in such a terrible mental health state right now isn't, you know what I mean? Like, his, his mental health is still important. Right. And it was like, well, that's karma. No, karma's not bad mental health on anybody yeah but at this at, at, at the same time it's like i don't know if well cheated or he didn't cheat but at the same time if he did why he obviously has he has it all right you know multi-millionaire the most famous actor right now um beautiful wife very accomplished wife like beautiful, if it beautiful is family yeah if it is true that he did cheat then why right so so do we assume that i mean we again we can't generalize that do we do we do we assume that that's because of some past traumatic issues, could it be, or it could be current issues that he has with life. Nevertheless, it's something that even if they, if it is, it's nothing that happened just then, right then and there on the spot. Oh, right. I'm gonna go cheat. So there's, right. there's clearly some trauma behind that. There's something there, and you know, and I want to be careful too, guys. Um, I speak for myself. I think we kind of we kind of throw the word trauma around a lot, and trauma shows up for everybody differently. But all, the only part, I'm, the only point I'm trying to make is. There's something that happens in us that makes us do what we do, period, right? Upbringing, experience, life, whatever. So what I'm saying to that person that was talking to you is, why is that okay, right? That he, because if we don't fix what's wrong, that will continue to happen. He'll continue to experience karma. If again, all things are true, right? Like, forget Will Smith and Jada, anybody, if, if somebody, does if somebody gets cheated on and they get cheated on back or somebody cheats and they get cheated on back 
and then the answer is, well, you deserved it. Okay, well, there's clearly something wrong. Right. Like, like that's not be natural behavior, mm -hmm. right? But then the question is, if it is natural behavior for you, this person, then why is it? Right. Right. Again, right. identifying it. But I, I feel like we we digressed a little bit. But I want to get back to, um, how black men are received when outwardly expressing anxiety depression okay right so like this is where i i, I take account of it and 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 speak on a past experience so i mentioned it briefly in other podcasts and haven't really touched on it in here but february 22nd 2009 my younger brother was murdered at the time it was the most difficult part of the difficult thing i've had to do in my life and it still is to this day i had you know to identify a body pick a casket make the arrangements and bury my brother was the hardest shit i ever had to do and with that came those moments where my guys were by my side in term, in those moments where I was when I was in the public light, my guys were right by me. You know, the funeral services and so on were right by me. But outside of them, I'm home. I'm not talking to my guys. Like I think for a good two years, I'm a shell of a man. Like just existing. I took like three months off of work, then when I went, it was just bad. My lady at the time held me down tremendously, but I was shit to her. You know what I'm saying? I tried to, like I was telling somebody the story the day, when I tried to do right, when I tried to like, you know what, I've been I've been in a bad spot, let me take her out and have a good time. We go to a Maxwell concert. I cried from the time the concert started until the time the concert ended. Had, I, I couldn't control it. Yeah. And it made for a shitty, a shitty, a shitty experience for her because she's like, fuck, I can't even enjoy myself because this dude is just an emotional wreck. And this was months after it happened, but it was right. just, it was like my first time being out and, and I, I was just in a bad spot. But I say that to say like I was home Dealing with my stuff, not in the public light. Whenever I was in the public light, I just asked you guys to remind me to be strong. It wasn't really exposing that. I wasn't calling you guys when I was crying every fucking night. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just, and it, and I look back at it and I'm thinking, why didn't I? Because, because yeah. well, if I ever needed y'all, y'all were there. Yeah. But why didn't I, Liam? Why didn't I talk about it? Right. And I, I think in this particular case, right? I think what you were faced with is how strong you had to show up for your family, right? Your whole family was looking to you for strength, I think. And and obviously, outside of Peaches and Duck, you were the most affected, right? Like it's, or outside of Peaches, like you both, you two are the most affected. So it's ironic that people are still looking to you for strength, right? right. right? But, but I think that is a natural tendency and I think the natural tendency is again protect, right? Let me let me make sure everybody else is okay. Let me make sure everybody is good, and we forget about ourselves. So I think in that scenario, that that particular situation, that was a tragedy, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think your emotion was ever going to be misinterpreted, right? Like you you okay. you, you crying, okay. you good whatever point. whatever good it point. is, like that that it was a a, a tragedy that everybody locally was empathetic and sympathetic towards the family. But even in the same regard, I didn't speak about it. Like I didn't know, I didn't have the know better then to go, yo, you need to get, you need to talk to somebody about right. this shit. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think you didn't speak about it? I was in, I was just, I don't know. I was in a dark spot and I guess, you know, I ended up writing the play. Mm, you know what I'm saying? True. Like that was, yeah. that was my way to speak about it. You know what I'm saying? So. And that's what we talked about before, Chief, where it's like, you fortunate were fortunate enough to have that outlet, you know what I'm saying? And it in ter in, in terms of a release is therapeutic, right? Like very right, much right, so. right in the very play so. where you didn't necessarily feel like you had to sit down on somebody's couch and, and, and spill your guts, you know what I'm saying? True, true, true. But I don't think you're the norm. You know what I'm saying? Like not not there's way more black men who have no artistry who can't find a release than that do. True, true. So just to, you know, to pat myself on the back and to kind of, you know, inspire someone else. Like I, so in dealing with that situation, I ended up taking a ride one weekend, locking myself in a hotel, me and my lady at the time, and I, and I, I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and then 30, 43 pages later, ends up being a stage play titled, I Wish Life Had Training Wheels, and it just describes the whole, you know, my life growing up with my brother, how it happened, how I, how I rebuilt and so on and so forth. But like my man just said, I had that, you know, that therapeutic measure to where I can go. So what do you do if you don't? Right. You know what I'm saying? And, so, and when you don't, I think 
again, depending on the time, depending on your environment, I think if we are faced with tragedy, the black community like wraps their arms around those people, right? And I think and it's shifting now in terms of mental illness, but I, I don't feel like that was like this in the 90s, right? Or the early 2000s. I think if, if, if somebody's different, right? If somebody has let's call them mental challenges, whatever they are, right? Whether it be depression, anxiety, right? Like suicidal thoughts, whatever it is, they get they're quick to be labeled, right? Very quick, yeah, yeah. Very quick to be labeled by our own. And I think, and we can, we can get into it, but I think that comes from a place of self-hate, right? And that's not a popular topic, right? It's tough for a lot of people to accept, but that is something that is very prevalent in the black community, regardless if we address it or not, right? It, it shows up when black people or famous black people and the Kanye's, the Tyrese's, the, the Will Smith's, when they show up in, in, in an emotional state, and our response is, he deserved it. Our response is, that nigga's crazy. Our response is, he look like he, he's, he, soft. he's soft crying in front of everybody, mm -hmm. right? Whereas if this was a tragedy and he, sh he just displayed those same emotions, we will wrap our arms around right. him. The empathy comes pouring in. Right. Why not now? But the crazy shit is, everybody that, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people that are saying these things about him or them, they are experiencing the same shit. Right, right. That's the right. crazy thing. So I think, again, the mirror, I think a lot of it too is, that's how, and again, I'm not speaking for everybody, but that's how a lot of times their messaging is received when they come out to one of their friends. So again, that's where the self-hate, it's like the abuse abuse. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. And and it starts with each other, right? It starts with, with everybody protecting their circles of influence, right? So if, if you're in a group and you can pick up on something, you have to make that person feel comfortable in expressing it because guess what? That will probably be the same person that you're gonna have to turn to when statistically, we're gonna experience some level of depression. Right, statistically, yes, we're, gonna, we're gonna absolutely. we're gonna experience some some form of depression, whether it's you know at a high level or a low level, we're gonna experience it. And you add in a pandemic, and a quarantine, oh, and um, national injustice like across the the country, yeah, we we're, we're impacted, we're a target. That's guys. the bugged out part about this. So I have a good friend of mine who I've been building with recently. I, I told you about the gentleman. I'm, I talked to him recently. He said he said he'd be down to get on here, but. Mm -hmm multi-millionaire has every and anything he needs in this world pandemic got him fucked up mm. at home depressed i send him a text every day like yo i'm praying for you i hope your strength is good you know you know i'm checking on you every single day i'm texting him in the morning just kind of making sure he's he's still moving about moving about and he texts me he'll text back maybe once every three weeks like yeah i'm okay you know i'm not great but i'm not you know i'm not terrible but like he's just the depression is in a bad spot so i think it's it, uh, like, you bring up another point where I think a lot again the self hate where a lot of people don't give that rich person, i.e. Will Smith, i.e. Kanye, the pass because they're rich. Yeah, like that, that right? like that has any barring on like their that, mental health. It you know has nothing to do with so, it. Not not that we would know, but I wonder if, you know, these cats are reaching out to each other. You know what I'm saying? Are, are like the Will Smiths and the Kanye, like where are they from? Is is Jazzy calling Will like, yo, my man, like I got you. I mean I would hope you know what so. I'm I mean I feel like I, I, they're they're regular people, right? Without like a doubt. like they're they're, they're, Without a doubt. they're regular people, and I think they're in a a class of people that can't necessarily just pop up to somebody's house like yo let's chop it up real quick like I do when I'm in town I just come over. Right, right, right. So I think they have an understanding of because of that subculture, right? The the the, the rich and famous subculture. So I would hope they're doing that. I would imagine they're doing it. I, I would, all this awareness right now. I mean, I know um, with the whole Kevin Hart situation, he publicly spoke about the people who reached out to him and right, and, right, and right. those who were trying to capitalize on him that he thought was his friends. Do um, you think we have this too tough thing? Are we still trying to protect our masculinity when, yeah. it, when it comes to when it comes to supporting the homies though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you came to me crying, I'm like, yo, something's not right. I'm not like, yo, you soft. Get your shit together. You know what Again, I'm saying? Well, I think it depends on the situation. I think it, do, I think it does but depend on the situation. at the end of the day, like, if... But no, forget about the homies, right? Like, let's just say somebody you know. Don't know him well, but you know him, right? And he show up online crying. Like, the, the, the that question should be posed to that situation. 
Because that's not somebody who you have love for, you know what I'm saying, necessarily. How we respond to that? The perfect black man stranger. I actually have a very good scenario about that. We could talk about that off camera, but we talked about a dude constantly posting online about his breakup and yada, yada, yada. And we kind of played him a little bit. And now that I'm thinking about it, like, he probably could have used some support. Yeah. I don't, like, I didn't know, I don't know the dude like that, but I, you know, I, I see it and it's like, oh, well, you know. We, That's the we, default. We mock it. That's the default, man. The default, and it's, and it's all of us. Like, like you said, you just brought up a situation where we did it. Like, it's the default, right? It's, and again, like we said, guys, I am not a therapist and I am not holier than thou, right? These are all things that we're, we're dealing with as well. My aim is to just shed light on it and start the conversation, Right. To kind of shift the thinking. So that's, but I think to to the counter, not to counter that, but to 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 add on to that, as as much as they start the conversation, I think the message right now is more for the person who's receiving it. Like hear, mean? like hear this person coming to you, and don't mock it. Mm -hmm. Like accept it. Like don't like don't don't make light of it. Like if, if the people are are vulnerable enough to expose that, then you have to be able to accept it in a way where they're they're subtly or overtly or however you want to look at it, asking for help. Yeah, but I don't think it's. I, I I personally don't think it shows up as much in loved ones, right? Like I don't think it shows up as much in loved ones, but it's like, like all for one, one for all, right? As corny as that sounds, like we got to come together as a people. Like we have to, we have to take care of our own. I'm trying to in find every it. sense of the uh, phrase. I'm trying to find this email, Tasha. Shout out to Tasha. Tasha sends an email. She has a quote at the bottom of her email, and it's kind of like. The, it's about kids, but I think it, it can be applicable to men. It's like the people who need the most help, help ask for it in the most unloving of ways or mm, something like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, we have to do a better job of recognizing that in people because oftentimes people don't know how to articulate that and they're showing it in different ways. And it could be, you know, like, like the dude breaks up with his girl and he's upset and he starts tearing shit up or it turns violent or whatever the case may be. Like, that's a sign. It's a clear-cut sign he may need some help because that guy may be suffering from abandonment issues right mm -hmm. like these these things that go undiagnosed and that and that's all I'm saying people it's like I'm not saying that we all need a clinical diagnosis I'm not saying that but what I am saying is that we all suffer from some type of challenges that derive from childhood that's without, what I'm saying without a doubt period without, right? but even not it, just in general some type of challenges in life that you have compartmentalized and yeah. have not addressed that yeah. need to be unpacked and taken a, and given a serious look. Yeah, and I think how we show up in relationships is a reflection of what we have not dealt with, right? Because you think about, like, you think about, like I talked about in the last, actually, I don't know if that made it. I, don't, I think that got edited out. But I was talking about the time where this girl I was talking to, and, yeah, we, we edited it. But anyway, long story short, guys, there was a girl I was talking to for a very short period of time, and I like fell for her very, very hard, very quickly, to the point where I felt like I was no longer in control. Mm -hmm. The next day I cut it off with her because I'm like, I can't allow somebody to have that much, um, I don't wanna say control, but that much influence over my emotions. But you were essentially afraid to expose that vulnerability. Yeah. Like I'm here on this. I think what I think a quote you said was, had she asked for my paycheck, she would have got it. Right, right, but, exactly. But and I wasn't used to being that way with anybody. So I shut it down. Now in in fear of what though? In fear of exposing the vulnerability? In it, fear of it, protecting it, your emotions. In and, fear of her exposing me. Right? Because I wasn't in control. So I and again, I to date I've haven't gotten this way again, but I wasn't in control, so that person, I, again, it was um, fight or flight, right? Like, I just left because I'm like, I'm not prepared to deal with what could happen because I don't know what can happen. I was no longer in control. So, boom, like, it's a perfect scenario is I give myself to her, and then she doesn't feel the same way about me as I feel about her. Mm -hmm. So then now my emotions are exposed because now she could be out doing her thing, and I'm thinking that this girl's like madly in love with me, right. like and I am with her, right. or I wasn't necessarily in love with her, but I was definitely, you know, in my feelings. And I'm like, no, that's not worth the risk. Like my boss would say, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, nah, I'm gonna just cut all ties now. 
And, and I'm not going to give anybody that leverage over and, and me. What, what are you doing? Though? I'm cutting all ties and I'm sparing myself the heartache. I'm sparing myself the headache. I'm sparing myself the embarrassment. I'm sparing myself all of the, the emotional above. attachment. All and of the I think, above. I think we do a, f- a, f- a phenomenal job of protecting those feelings, of hiding those feelings. And in actuality, as, as I've grown, I think we have to risk the possibility of potentially exposing all of those things to even have a chance at a possibility of finding all the good things. Yes, the challenge is every time we've seen in our upbringing that exposed, it wasn't good most times. Right. Right, like there's fair, not there's fair. not there's not a lot of positive examples of somebody being vulnerable, right? Like 100%. that that's the challenge. Like most statistically, most black men don't grow up in a two parent household. So when you don't see someone unconditionally loving someone, like the only time that you see somebody become vulnerable, maybe in the streets, and once you saw them become vulnerable, they got hit. Okay. So, or you're, like you're he, absolutely right. so he just, got the drop. So one. let's go back to my daddy issues again, but we're not doing mine. We're doing yours. So I know yep. for a fact that Curtis loves his boys to death. Right. I know he loves G to death. Yep. How often were you told by your dad that he loves you? Were you told a lot? No. But you like, knew it. But you didn't get that vulnerability my dad that you just spoke of. The crazy shit is my dad. My dad is emotional as shit. But not in terms of like love and care. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's the type of dude where if it's on, it's on. You know, and his emotions would go real high. Mm-hmm. Right? And he laughs his heart out. So he's he's emotional like that. But like in terms of in touch with his own feelings, mm-hmm. my dad has trouble um expressing his feelings. Right. Right. It's okay. like artic- articulating his exactly feelings. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I've never I was never taught to how to articulate my feelings, which is why of our peer group so I'm more closed off than, than here, the rest of and, and this is the thing. So here's where the dynamic shifts for me because obviously I didn't have that. I couldn't. My dad, get, I know. <laughs> I didn't have nothing to compare that to. But in having my own children, I think I do a hell of a job like being open and exposed like and vulnerable. Like my kids, all of them have seen me cry. And like I, I don't know if you guys know, check my Instagram page at Chief the Poet. There's a video of myself. I tried to have like a little moment with my daughter with a song by uh, it's called "This Is Why I Love You" by "Why I Love You" by Major, and it's like it's a dope song. I'm like let me let me get a moment and record my baby singing her this song, and I got emotional and just started crying. And she's looking at me and she starts crying, and I just filmed it and I posted it up and it low key went viral. But a couple of, you know celebs shared it, but I tell you that because it's a it's a powerful moment between father and daughter where typically. A man wouldn't allow his children to see him cry. Yeah, case in point, Brianna didn't see me cry till I got married. So she was twenty one, so wow. twenty one years. And wow. I and and the, the ironic thing is, and Lowe had never saw me cry, right? And then we've been together for nine years. And the ironic thing is, you're the one who made me cry. <laughs> true, like true. Th- that's the crazy true. thing. So yeah, I've yeah, never, because yeah. my dad. I like, told y'all a couple of episodes, my best man speak was rocking. <laughs> um, Our best man speak. Shout out to Oz. My my dad, every time I've seen him cry, has been out of anger. Like, again, like having trouble with um, articulating his emotions. So he just goes in like my dad. Fun fact about my dad, like when I was younger, his, 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 uh, Mantra or tagline is he's never been in a fight over 15 seconds. That's what he used to say. And I'm like, yeah, this dude's bugging. Until I seen it in action multiple times. <laughs> and I will second that this dude's never been in a fight over 15 seconds. Anyway, he, his, his, his crying would always come um, from a place of rage, right, or, or anger. Like, it wasn't... We've all been there. Like, he cried at my, my college graduation. Um, but I didn't see that. I just saw a picture. Um, but anyway... Imagine what that felt like. Random side note. Imagine Having your that. dad at your graduation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I hate you, yo. <laughs> but I'm saying, imagine what that had to feel like for Pop, somebody who's so emotionally reserved, to right. finally to like imagine the pride that ran through homie that day, right. watching his his oldest boy walk across the stage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit had to be dope. 
Yeah, Nevertheless. But, no, I'm, I'm sure it was, but I think the, the reason why my dad's like that. <laughs> what an asshole. It's <laughs> a little comic relief to lighten up the mood. Word. My dad and my uncles are like that because, I mean, shit, they grew up in this Jim Crow South. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. You're talking about not being able to sp- expose vulnerability. Like, that shit was literally life and death. Now, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm down sure. there. Um, so I think that it, it, it comes from somewhere, right? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, all these things come from somewhere, right? You probably saw Peach's emotion or somebody in your family had some emotional connection when you were coming up, which allowed you to feel free and be comfortable doing it. You know? The thing is, I don't think so. I think it took... It took that situation with Peanuts. And like, nah, you was emotional before that. Yeah, but not like, to not to the way I am now. Like, fam, I watch movies and be teary-eyed over some simple Yo, shit. Yo, you, you know, know what's what I'm crazy? This happens to me like once every year, maybe twice every year. I'll just be on the couch, and I'll be watching commercials, and I just start getting emotional. <laughs> like, I'll be nah. texting law, I'm like, it's happening again. No, nah, I'm like dead ass. Nah, I'm, but you was, you was. dead ass tears, fam. Like, yeah, but man, I remember that time you was shaking on the porch, crying. Because I almost killed my brother. Like, yeah. That, but, <laughs> that's different. But, that's but it, anger. That yeah. was anger, and like, I was, I was deathly afraid that you I had also, hurt him. You also cried one time at Peanuts football game, the first time we had came to see him play when he was in varsity, I think. I, I went with you, so I must. We must have had a bye week. We were still in college. Okay. I don't remember. You got like, he went off obviously, like he always does, or always did, and you got emotional just watching him. So my my point is, you're more emotional than you give yourself credit for, right? And I and I obviously okay. So the, with, the, the tragedy. So, so then let's let's look let's look at that right now. So look what I just did. Defended. Not being emotional, right? Yeah, like I got like even with me acknowledging that I am emotional, yeah, I can't I'm let not, you tell me I'm as emotional right. as you think I am. Right, right, right. I'm emotional. I ain't that emotional. I ain't right. emotional. You know what I'm saying? So like, and, that, and that's and that's the shit we do as men. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm I'm going now. Nah, it took it took some a major tragedy in my life for me to become emotional. Like, it's not okay for you to just be emotional by nature. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? And this is and this is a this is therapy within the therapy, y'all. Like. We have to be able to accept this shit in our, within ourselves. Like, yo, like it's okay to fucking be emotional. Yeah, we don't, we don't got to be hard all the time, man. And I still struggle with that, bro. Like, I still struggle with, um, like even I was thinking about. I was, uh, I took a call before you got got here. One of Big Baby's boys. Yes, he worked in my house all day while I was at work. Um, yeah, I was working from home. Um, <laughs> uh, one of Big Baby's boys walked in, and I, I kind of startled him. He didn't expect to see me. And, he's, and I was on the call, uh-huh. and then I was like, and then I just said, what's up? And he just kept it moving, but he's like, oh, oh, my bad. And I was like, it's all good. But I say that to say, like, I'm so, like, on guard all the time. Like, if I walk into an environment, like, it took me a while to come into, like, walking into the barbershop. Like, I was at the barbershop today. Walk into the barbershop and saying, what's up to everybody? Like, that just that doesn't come natural to me. Like I walk in the barbershop and the first thing I'm doing and I'm not trying to act hard. I'm not this is it is sizing up the room. It it is it is just a natural um behavior for me. You think it's because you light skin? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, 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 that, no, no, why are you bullshitting? I, I really think people are always trying to try me. But I don't think they I don't think people excuse me. I don't think people are always trying to try me. I think people will feel comfortable trying me. Okay. So I mean that makes sense, but so, you're not like it's not like we're small. I'm men, not. Though. I'm like, not. We're not but, little. But dudes. I'm like like my man Yo Gotti said, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. Okay. So that that's kind of where I, I'm. I always go, but it's like, it's like, bro, you don't gotta be that way. Like you can come in and, in fact, you can loosen the room up if you speak. Right. Right. And that's again, that's and that is a, a cognitive thought when I walk into unfamiliar rooms. Because like what I said in a couple episodes, we're responsible for taking care. Yeah, of Yeah, and because I also know too, depending on the uh, environment, like if I'm in the hood, I soften the room up because they may view me as a threat. Who is this dude? I don't know him. He's not saying right, nothing, right? right? right, right. Well, oh no, what's good? What's good? How you? All right, all right. Good to see y'all. Like that. That's one example. The other example is you walk into another uncomfortable setting. That's another thing, man. Like we have, like Butter said, we always got to be on, right. right? We walk into. A barbershop for the first time, we've never been in there, we got to be on, right? We don't know who's in that barbershop, and and we would like it to be inviting, which a lot of them are, but, you know, you still got to walk in there and, and... Let niggas know you ain't no punk without saying nothing, nobody. Not you got to see that, that not, on your face and in your shoulders. You no, but see, that, but that's 
again, that used to be my mindset. And then I had to change it where it's like, nah, bro, just like walk in. Live. Make Say people comfortable, right? right? Like, make people sure. comfortable. But then they flip that. You walk into an all white environment as the only black man. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I got to make sure that they know that I'm not a threat. Right. 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 No, so it's sure. the same thing. It's crazy. But the approach is different, though. Kind of. No, it's because you when you walk into the white environment, you're like, hey, how's it going, guys? You know, your tone is different. Yeah, yeah. You your hands are up, your smile is on your face. And then you go in the barbershop, it's the head now. What's up? Yeah. What's up? Just in case somebody want to get, you know what I'm saying? What's yeah, up? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a lot of work. It is. It's a lot of work. That's, that's That's the bottom line. It's a lot of work. And I think there's a lot to think about being black. Like, and, and I don't, listen, guys, listen, listen. For all my white listeners, I this is not a woe is me or, or woe is us. I'm just helping you understand that these are some of the, 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 the cognitive thoughts that we have in approaching these situations, right? Our default, right? We just talked about, we see somebody openly expressing emotion is to, oh, he's a sucker, right? He's or soft. he's this, he's soft, he's that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, man, my man got some issues, right? Whether Word. it be current issues, past issues, he's dealing with something. And whether they're even, you want to identify them as issues, because they may not even be big ones. It's just small shit that, a bunch of small little things that you may not be aware that have impacted you in a way that's created this person you are, and you don't know it. And it's just a minor, a minor adjustment that can potentially cause you to walk into a room and lighten up the space yeah. and open opportunities for you because you smiled. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, No, I, I trust me. I know it all too well, man. And, and the, the, the challenge is, I don't think any of us, well, I should say, and I don't think as a, as a black community, we've mastered how to embrace brothers and sisters who are struggling mentally. I don't think we've, I don't think we've mastered a collective, okay, here's how we embrace them. I think we've mastered the protests. Like, I think, I think we've mastered how to stand up for social injustices. I think we've mastered that. Like, now, obviously, we haven't arrived, right? We still got shit we got to work on, but... I think as a whole, man, we are, we are, and again, it goes, and it, I, I personally feel like, and you guys can challenge me on this, but I personally feel like it goes back to self-hate. It's, it's how we were taught to, to perceive ourselves. And how fucked up is that? Like how we're taught to perceive ourselves, right? How we're, in a lot of cases, demonized in the media, right? Which is not just cause. Like, Black on black crime. This is going to be another episode. Not a thing. But that is not a real thing, guys. That is not a real thing. There's crime in every community, period. Why are we getting singled out, right? right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to dedicate a whole episode to that. But what I'm saying is, like, white media sometimes puts these stigmas or, or um, traits on us. And as black people, we accept it. Yeah, but it's, it's, it goes back to the simple thing like, like uh, having... The picture in the in the uh, in the newspaper or on the news, they find the they find the vicious, most vicious one of the little black boy with the you know with the hoodie on and, and doing some you know whatever. The one time he smoked weed, took a picture with a blunt in his hand. All of a sudden, oh, he's a drug user right. and yada yada yada. Some homeboy who just shot up a fucking church. You know what I mean? He, they got his his Sunday's best outfit on. And, and he, su- he suffers from mental illness. And he suffers from mental illness. And not we don't get a pass though. Right. And again, not woe is me. I'm just opening up the uh, conversation, guys. Open up the conversation on how we can start addressing these things and identifying them in each other. And um, and I, it we can't expect somebody to help us if we don't start the conversation with ourselves and trying to help ourselves. And help yourself meaning, okay, here's something I do. I don't know why. It may have worked out for you. My, one of the leaders of my company used to always say, the, the worst thing that can happen is when you do the wrong thing and it works. Right. Right? Because then you're going to continue to do it. Right. I mean, the biggest thing for us, man, is, is how we handle it as a community, how we handle it with each other. And we can't begin the healing process of all this shit that we deal with on a day-to-day basis, from our past um, ancestors. We can't, we can't begin the process until we all accept that all as in black people that we that we have shit we got to deal with we no and, nobody's above it and like you said you're, you're speaking from an individual perspective about the shit that we have to deal with within ourselves but i think more importantly or just as important people need to people on the receiving end of this need to be more open to accepting our friends our people the community people we don't know the will smiths and kanye's out there and understand that they need help 
Right. And being there to support them. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm so I know I've seen the trolls in comments just going crazy. And even like the video I just said with, with um when I posted with, with MJ, we, we both crying, showing a, a loving moment between father and daughter. The troll comes in and says, "Oh, he just trying to he just trying to show off and get likes because with his daughter." I'm like, "Yo, like." Like are you So what are you doing then? Right. By putting this in. Right. So I'm like, are you kidding me, bro? Like like who like who does that? I mean maybe somebody does, but it's just like there's there's those people who can't appreciate a good vulnerable moment from But I I will take it one step further. What if that's what that what if that was your reasoning? Like what what if you just wanted to get likes? Because you have low self esteem. Did it mean it was insincere? Regardless of that. I'm saying, what, is, that, is, that what yeah, is that what you should right. like, imply? What, no, no. Forget that for one second. You posted it just because you wanted to get likes, because you have low self-esteem. Okay. Right? So... How is that... Right. So, to, to your question, how is that a bad thing? How is that... Exactly. I did that to help boost... Right. Like... like within me. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I'm saying. Right. So, like... No, no, right. There, there, there's... That video, in my opinion, can't be misinterpreted. Period. It can't be. But even if, if somebody feels that way, what's wrong with that? Right? right. I'm right. identifying an a, a area... Where I need to feel better about myself, and here's here's what I'm doing and to I, aid that. I think you baited me too. I think I, I responded with something like, "Yo, you know what? Like, you're wacky, you're bugging, but you need a hug." Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? So I think my response was kind of like, "Yo, get yourself some therapy." Yeah. Like, and this was way before we even talked. about Yeah, because he probably way. got daddy issues too. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But, so um, before you before you get into your final thoughts, and we push into a close now, I just want to say like, it's like, fellas, we're never too big. We're never too macho. We're never too tough. Yeah, I don't care how many cats you knocked out, how many fights you've been, how many bodies you got, what your record looked like. Murder? <laughs> Murder who? <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter who you are or where you stand or where you're, where, what pedestal you're put on within your family, whatever the case may be. I'm six, one and a half, six, two, 250 pounds, and the nation has seen me cry comfortably. Like, I've, I've, I've intentionally... Put myself out there for the for the world to see me cry, and, and you help heal. And that's extreme, and you don't have to do that, right? Like the nation will never see me cry. Like I'm not gonna cry on this. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm gonna figure out a way not to. There's pause and delete. So I'll be utilizing that if ever uh, if ever got to that point. But um, you don't you know cry with yourself, right? Cry with yourself until you feel comfortable having a conversation with someone else. You know what I'm saying? Like and. And hopefully, we'll all collectively figure out a way to embrace. And, and even if you don't, if you if you can't get to that point where you're comfortable having a conversation with someone, what did you text me today, though, about the insanity? Like the oh, the, the definition thing. of insanity is um, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Right. Like we had that conversation today. You know what I'm saying? So it, even if you don't find that level of comfort and you notice some shit bothering you, you got to push through the discomfort in order to help yourself heal. And there's right. always there's always therapy, guys. There's right. always this. Oh, if there's any, I reached out to my homegirl who's doing big baby you therapy. You gotta stop touching me. Whatever. I reached out to my homegirl who does big baby therapy because mm-hmm. a friend of mine asked me to find her a therapist. I'm like, I think she prefer a male. Can you get me a male? And she's like, Yo, there's really no males in my circuit right now. Mm. So if there's any male therapists out there who, whether black, white, indifferent, any male therapists who think they can help and, and you know open a door for a black man to go to therapy. Hit us up. All all black men need therapy at gmail.com. Yeah, that's a good point. Any therapist, right? That if you're local and you're accepting new clients, hit us up, right? Like I have no problem advertising your your business because we need it, right? right. Um we'll figure it out. Um but I I, I think it's uh it's a it's a network that I feel we should all have to some degree. All right, not necessarily have to have a personal relationship with the therapist, but I think one should be in reach, right, of your network, whether it's, you know, six degrees separation or what have you, because I just think it's important, right? We have to take our mental health serious because, believe it or not, guys, if you have kids, some of these challenges that you're faced with, you're projecting, right? You're projecting them. There's no two ways about it if you're not addressing them, right? Or you could be addressing them and you're still projecting them, but you have to identify them, right, and figure out the best way to cope the best way to deal um, because there may be a better way there may be a better way there's always a better way so final thought final thought we, we've touched on this a lot guys but confide in someone about your potential challenges and begin to work towards breaking the cycle right and when, when he says confide in someone make sure it's someone you trust 
Yeah. You, some people will just use it against you, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's a shitty situation, and it sucks, but we've all seen it happen before. The one moment you decide to be vulnerable and share that with somebody, throw it back in your face, and it's real, real shitty. So find find, find, find someone you really believe. Find yourself a chief of bell. Word. Holla at us. You know what I mean? Yeah, if y'all, you know, shit. like I said, we are not therapists, but we can talk through some yeah, shit now word. if y'all want to do that. All black men need therapy at gmail.com. All black men need therapy on all social media platforms. Um. Be the stone that creates the ripple which prompts the change. Yeah, you, Mahatma Black Gandhi over here, you know what I'm saying? Um, nevertheless, y'all, we appreciate y'all for tuning in to, I don't know what episode we are now, but we grooving, we grooving out this joint. Nine, I think it's nine. It might be nine, you know what I'm saying? We consistent too, every Wednesday could. Um, nevertheless, y'all, we appreciate y'all. Hit us up. Again, all black men need therapy at gmail.com. Do us all a favor and hug a black man today and tomorrow. We out. Peace.